Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock Tio Studio, and today I'm sharing with you my December Tag It Tuesday challenge. Tag It Tuesday is a Facebook group, and you can go over and ask to join. <clears throat> There's an altered tag and an ATC challenge each each month of the year. So this will be the last one for 2018. Today is Christmas Eve. I hope that you're celebrating with your family if that's the holiday that you celebrate. Or if you celebrated solstice on the 21st, you're going to do Christmas tomorrow, Kwanzaa on the 26th, whether you celebrate Hanukkah or Ramadan. I hope that those that whatever you're celebrating, it brings you light and joy at the end of this 2018. So that being said, let's get to the challenge. The challenge has four steps. You are supposed to use two. You can use them in any order um, that you want to. Step one was to use tissue paper. Now this um, tag already has some paint on it. I have a collection of beautifully printed, painted tags that I made when I was cleaning the plates of my gel, my gel plates during the monthly challenge that had a, a gel printing every day. I think it was April. I'm not sure, but anyway, I did some gel printing every day. And um, these tags, I need to stop hoarding them and I, I wanted to use them. I was not interested in using blue, green, or red, or any of the colors that I have been using for my projects all month. I wanted something different, so I picked this one. The tissue paper that I collaged on is from a pattern, like a sewing pattern, and um, that's, you know, it has fun little lines and stuff on it. It's always fun to use sewing patterns in your collage, <clears throat> just for, I don't know, just because they have lines. It's, it's pretty cool. It also is a neutral color and it kind of, you know, goes a little bit translucent when you glue it on with some type of a medium. So the next prompt was doily. So I decided to use this, uh, this um, paper doily, you know, that you might put on if you're having tea or something, you might put it on the plate or something. I have a few of these laying around and the next prompt was shimmer. So I decided to go ahead and paint the doily with some shimmery paint from PBO. This is a PBO Dyna Iridescent Gold. I also add, added a little bit of that here and there on my tag with my finger, um, just to add a little bit of extra shimmer to it. The um, When I painted the doily, it also made an interesting pattern on this under paper, which I will save and use some other time. <clears throat> it's like a reversed pattern of the doily. You could also use a dolly stencil or a mandala type stencil if you wanted to, but I decided to use the actual paper doily. Now, since I'm using gold shimmery paint, I'm going to have to change my glue. You know, if you use matte medium over something that you want to be shiny, it dulls it down. And that's not fun when you're trying to go for shimmer. So I needed to switch to um, glossy collage page that I have which it just doesn't dull the shimmer so I had to get that out I still have some of that matte medium on my plate though so I'm gonna have to use it somehow <laughs> it just came out of the bottle really fast <laughs> sometimes it does that you shake it down and it just goes plat, splats everywhere so I switched to glossy collage page um, from Eileen's same company that makes tacky glue I use all the time to glue down my doily <clears throat> and I think it's very shimmery and gold but you don't really see the detail of it as much anymore because it kind of blends into the background if you look up really close you can see it though and trimmed off the excess made sure that that was all dry Marking off my steps. The next step is the magazine cutout step. I pulled out this ad. It's for goldfish crackers. And apparently they're coming in different flavors with, um, with beets and things like that. I thought it was cute. They just made the little goldfish crackers into this sort of a fern leaf shape. Some kind of a plant shape. So I decided to cut those out. Um, I cut out the orange one because I had orange in the background already. And then the green one because there was a little bit of that sort of an olive green up at the top of the tag already. It sure was fun um, making something with one of these 
tags that already had some paint on it because it really gave me a direction to go. So when you're fussy cutting something, you really need to get some sharp scissors, small bladed sharp scissors. I think people get frustrated with cutting things out because they don't have the right scissors. I see a lot of people in video using these giant scissors, <laughs> like big giant scissors, and I, I can't figure out why they're doing that. So um, if you if you buy some small ones with sharp, sharp blades and sharp points, it's a lot easier to cut stuff out. So once I had them all cut out, then I just went ahead and glued the two sprigs, <laughs> goldfish sprigs, I don't know, uh, onto my tag. And they, they are representing plants, obviously. I haven't seen a plant that has goldfish on it, but they certainly look like plants to me and I thought they were cute. And they match the color scheme of my tag. <clears throat> so that's always good. Making sure that the bubbles are out and that everything is smoothed down with my finger. Of course, that gets sticky medium all over your finger. So you do need to remember to put some sort of a coating on your hands, like um, a nice lotion or some art guard or gloves in a bottle type product on your hands so that all that sticky stuff and paint comes off. I'm constantly using my hands in my art and you do need to be aware that there are chemicals in some of these products. So you wanna to try to protect your skin and put a barrier around it. So I also had this stamped tissue paper that I made a while ago. This is just plain old tissue paper stamped with uh, archival black ink, permanent black ink. And I thought it would be fun to use one of these little birds since one of the steps was tissue paper. Uh, so I'm going to put a little bird on my goldfish sprig. <laughs> it just makes me laugh. So I'm collaging that down as well to give a focal point to my tag. When you stamp items on tissue paper and you collage them, they become basically trans transparent. So all you see is the image. And it's a fun way to swap images that you might have with someone else who has different images than you. You can stamp up a sheet of um, tissue paper. It's easy to mail. It's a, a fun thing to do to send in happy mail and stuff like that. If you have some hand carved or unusual stamps that you think someone might enjoy, certainly they can use them if you stamp them on tissue paper with a permanent ink. So once that was dry, then it's time to do some detailing, of course. Um, I do like to back my tags. Um, I almost always put some sort of a, a backing border around them. It covers up any, any mess that you've made on the back because usually I get paint or something on the back <laughs> and also gives a nice border around the edge. And I enjoy that look, so I usually do that. Um, so I picked this br dark brown piece of paper because it kind of coordinates with the sepia tone paper, uh, sepia tone paint that's at the bottom of my tag where my ground is. But before I glue that on, I'm doing some detailing. Um, I had messed up the bird a little bit where I tore the paper. And so I'm t touching it up and maybe drawing in some lines that weren't there <clears throat> just to make it a little bit more mine. I add some black lines on the ground to make sure that those goldfish sprigs have something to grow out of <laughs> because it always annoys me when things are not grounded when they're just floating in space. I don't like that. The only things that should float in space are astronauts and space shuttles and satellites. Then I decide to add some shadows and highlights. <clears throat> this to me is an extremely important thing to do when you're collaging because it it makes the collaged piece that you've glued on there appear as if it's integrated into the project. So I always like to add shadows and highlights when I'm sticking something on like these goldfish sprigs. So I'm using a Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen. If you want to buy some pens uh, for mixed media, these are the ones I recommend. 
These are India ink pens. And once your surface is sealed like this is, because I've put a lot of different collage medium on it, um, you can draw with them and then quickly blend. And then they're permanent because it's India ink. I love these pens. I have a big set of them and I've been using them for a couple years now. They've None of them have run out of ink. And this is what I frequently use for my shading. If not this, then I use a water soluble product like a Stabilo pencil or something like that. But I do love these pens. All the products I'm using, of course, will be linked in the description box below, like I always do, so that you can find them if you'd like to purchase them. I'm also taking this sepia pen around the edge a little bit and rubbing it around the edge to give some shading on the sides of the tag, just for fun. I also could have used an ink pad for this, which you've seen me do lots of times, but this time I'm using the pen and then just rubbing it in like I was with the shadows. And then I'm going to switch and do some coloring with these same pens using an orange and a, an ochre color and a medium tone brown to color in my bird in similar colors to the whole card while still making it stand out because it is drawn in black. So it does still stand out from the background. So you can certainly use these pens to color as well. You don't have to just use them for, them for shading. If you don't have any pens at all, these are what I would recommend you get. They might seem a little bit expensive at first, but they're definitely worth it. So then I get my white Posk pen for the highlights. Um, have to get it flowing. I abuse my Posca pen so much. <laughs> Sometimes they need to be started, shooken up and started. All you do is just shake it really good to make sure that the acrylic ink inside is, is uh, blended and then press it down onto the table until it starts to puddle up a little bit and then scratch it, scratch it in that puddle until everything is coated and the tip is cleared of any gunk you might have got it into it, <laughs> like mediums or paint. Of course, sometimes they're ruined. Sometimes you can't fix it because you've not waited until your paint or medium is dry and you've drawn over the top of it and got your pen full of some sort of a medium. I also use this to add some splatters because I like splatters in my mixed media projects. So why is this a mixed media project? Because it has been using paint, collage, pens, um, all different types of media mixing them together instead of just sticking with one thing like acrylic painting or oil painting or something like that. So now I'm going to go ahead and add this to my backing paper and trim it down. Um, this is Aileen's Tacky Glue. It's it's always a favorite. <laughs> always a favorite. Um, great stuff, Aileen's Tacky Glue. It's probably been around for 50 years. I don't know. But you want to get something good and stuck. That's a good way to do it. It gives you a little bit of open time to move it and adjust it if you need to. Making sure that my hole is still punched using my crocodile punch. And then I'm going to add a word. So I get out my Tim Holtz stickers. Um, what are they? Tiny chat, big chat, chat stickers of some sort. I decide to use the bigger ones with the black background. So I'm just looking for some type of a nice word. And I picked the word blessings, which is a good word for this time of year. I want everyone to receive blessings this year. All of you have supported me and I'm very appreciative of it. So there's my sticker. I add a little highlight with some white Posca pin and then add some fibers, you know, finishing up my project just do some little hash marks in the upper and lower corners opposite of each other. I'm going to use some 
<clears throat> recycled sari ribbon and some other couple of scraps of ribbon, a gold wired ribbon and some brown just to finish off my tag. I hope you've enjoyed this project. I believe that Tag It Tuesday is going to continue in 2019. So if you want to go and join up and play along with the tag challenges, you certainly can over on Facebook. Um, if you have enjoyed this video, remember to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment or question below. Subscribe if you haven't already. And share this if you think it's beautiful and you want to share it with somebody. Pin it on Pinterest or send it to them on Facebook. That's all something that's great to do and helps me out. So there is my um, recycled sari ribbon and some sateen inexpensive ribbon and then this this wired piece of gold. I'm just going to tie it around it to keep it tight and then trim off the edge and keep the, the rest of it for some other project. So that's it for me for Tag It Tuesday, December 2018. Bye-bye. <laughs>